Yes. yes. But look at this. It's Yemen. Okay, so we're loading map the map up. It's Yemen. First time that we're streaming it. Tell me a little bit about Yemen. Man, Yemen is inspired by that urban close quarter combat battle. You're going to see some real fast pace close quarter combat action, and that B flag is just a brutal position. Guys are going to have to really keep guys out of that zone. Yeah, and as we see right off the bat here, it looks like the whole uh, North American side decided to take that flag together. And usually sometimes you'll see that teams push, go ahead and push up towards that B flag, but they all jumped on it to get it quickly. And now you see them making moves. We're on board with Toby. And Toby gets taken out right there. We'll swap over, and we're now on board with Twiz, who's flanking around here. Twiz with the MSMC, and he's got the laser sight attachment. Tell me a little bit about that. That laser sight is how you can get that increased hit by our accuracy on these, for these players. Got it. Yep. So that is Twiz picking up the kill right there. And he's going to go and hang tight as the North Americans are controlling two flags now. They have taken B, and Merck is on a tear right now. He just called in. It looked like a, a hell storm, and it picked up a double. And now he has the SMR. So that is actually a semi-automatic rifle, right? Right. He's got this uh, thing customized up in all sorts of ways. So he's using that select fire switch to change up whether he's first or not. Got it. So it uh, looks like he's doing some work with it right now. As a Ruby jumps around the corner, he gets taken out there. And now it looks like Merck's going to be calling in a care package. We'll stay on board with him and see what lands. 26 to 13 now as the North Americans are up. And it looks like that care package is coming down. And Merck turns right there and takes out Gunshi. This gave Gunchy a little bit of the business, and that care package just came through. So uh, let's see here what Merck is up to. It looked like it was a UAV. Yeah, that's a UAV. You see those UAV assist points coming up. We were just talking about that earlier. Every time you're using a support-driven streak, if someone gets a kill with that UAV up, you're earning some points for that. That's that UAV assist message. Right, so all those points from that UAV are going to contribute to his score streak. Tell me a little bit about what we're seeing down here with the score streak meter. Yeah, you can see that score streak meter in the bottom right hand corner of your screen right next to those three icons. That'll fill as the guys get score. It hits the top, they're gonna earn that next reward. Right, so as we see Big Timer is just getting started on his score streak here. And it looks like he took some shots right there and the North Americans are doing some great, great controlling of that B flag at the moment. Map control is so important in domination. And you have the North Americans doing a great job of just locking it down. Three minutes and 35 seconds left to go. And oh. three minutes and 30 seconds left to go as Big Timer takes that that hip fire with the laser sight attachment. That definitely helped him right there. Absolutely, man. You're going to see a lot of really good play from the hip and ADS with this particular attachment. So tell me a little bit about what we're seeing round base here now. Uh, you know, three minutes left to go here. You see at the top of the screen, it says round one of two. It's the score panel is telling us there's this is the first round. What's going on there? Right, so this is something we actually learn directly from the esports community. In a public game of domination, you, was, you usually only play one round. You rack up to about 200 score and the game's over. But when we watch the guys play competitively, we realize that they like to play at round base. That makes sure that everybody has to spawn on each side of the map. Right, so and that's important because it, it makes the game a little bit more fair in domination. You get to play from both spawns, and you're able to have an equal opportunity on both sides. It's a great, great thing. So we'll be playing two minutes and 30 seconds left here, and then the teams will switch spawn, and the score will remain, and we'll keep playing from that point on, right? Yeah, you know, so it's still the guys with the highest score are going to win that game, but these scores will carry over to the next round. They'll start with the same exact scores that they had with. Yeah, that's awesome. So... Great, great, great thing there for everyone who loves to play Domination. And now it looks like the North Americans are te turning the heat up completely with the three cap. A player is on the B flag. As we take a look here, we see that Mini and Shane were on the C flag. And it looks like they did manage to cap that C flag. And we're on board with Big Timer still. So why don't we hop on board with the Europeans, take a look. Well, actually, look at this. Twiz and Ray from the North American side, Ray of Optic Gaming and Twiz are on massive, massive kill streaks right now, David. We'll swap on board with Ray. And what's Ray got here? Yeah, Ray's got the death machine out. This is some of the new weapons that we have put back in. The death machine actually has a little baby brother is known as the war machine, which is the grenade launcher version. So it was really fun for us to put these clearly superior firepower weapons into the score streak system itself. Awesome. So he's got a care package as well. Looks like he's just doing some work with that that death machine. And, and you see him die and pull it back out again. 
So he's able to keep that death machine, whereas I think in the past, if you were if you died with the death machine, you lose it, right? That's right. So in Black Ops 2 multiplayer, you can hold on to that death machine sort of through multiple lives and through some extra ammo there. Yeah, and that's awesome. So Ray still has that thing, and he's got about 30 rounds left. So there it goes. It expires. And look at that play that just happened right there. Ruby ran right into a shock charge that came from the, the North American side. So tell me a little bit about that shock charge. Hester, I like to use that shock charge as a type of alarm system. I'll actually place it on the entrances and exits of buildings, so if anybody comes through that door, they get electrocuted very briefly, usually just enough time for me to spin on them and take that target out. Awesome. Well, look at this. 135 to 50, and you have about 30 seconds left to go, so we're getting to that point where this round is going to end and we're going to start back over. So the score was going to carry over. I'm just really excited for people to be able to check that out. And we'll take one more look here at the picture in picture. You see some players hopping on the flag, trying to play the objective near the end of the game. We'll take a look at the scoreboard as well. You see that Ray of Optic is on a tear. Huge, huge, huge game for him. 28 and 6 with 10 defense and 4 captures. And then you see Karma backing him up at 23 and 9. The North Americans are going massive at the moment. So a huge, huge game for the North Americans against the Europeans. All right, this next round's going to start immediately, guys. We're going to go right over into the next round of this game. Right after this round in the kill cam, we'll spin over. The guys will flip the spawns, as we say. Yep. And then flip we'll the start spawns. right again. All right, so here you go. We're switching sides. 